Hello everyone and welcome to this Friday's episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young, spring is finally here, and it's playoff time in sports. Before we get into the NBA and NHL playoffs, there were a few different races this past week that made some major headlines, so I'll jump right into it. I previewed it last week, but the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby was last weekend, and it truly lived up to the phrase, the most exciting two minutes in sports. In the closest Kentucky Derby finish in more than a quarter century, Mystic Dan pulled off the late push and held off challengers Sierra Leone and Forever Young to win the 150th edition of the historic race, quite literally by a nose. The winning time was 2 minutes and 3.34 seconds for Mystic Dan, followed by Sierra Leone, who also beat Forever Young by a nose for second place. It truly was a photo finish for the top three horses, and the crowd of just about 157,000 people were on the edge of their seats for those two exhilarating minutes. Continuing the weekend of photo finishes, on Sunday, Kyle Larson won NASCAR's Advent Health 400 by an astonishing .001 seconds in Kansas. Unlike the Kentucky Derby, it was literally impossible to tell with the naked eye who finished first between Larson and Chris Buescher. The finish was so close that Buescher's team and commentators on the broadcast fully believed he had won the race. Like I said, the .001 seconds separating first and second place is now the closest finish in the 76-year history of the NASCAR Cup Series. The pictures are just absolutely incredible. It looks like it's centimeters between the two top cars. The high-speed camera technology used to determine the winner is pretty impressive. NASCAR writer Zach Albert writes, NASCAR uses a line scan, photo finish camera, and software system called Finish Links. The image from Sunday's Cup Series finish showing Larson's number 5 Chevrolet, just ahead of Buescher's number 17 Ford, is a composite of thousands of tiny vertical image slices from the start or finish line. When cars cross the line, the camera captures several thousands of precise, time-stamped images per second to create the photo finish result image. In this instance, the appearance of Larson's front splitter breaking the plane to complete the final lap. That composite image was made available shortly after the checkered flag to the NASCAR control tower, where race officials made the final ruling per the camera. The finish was so close that timing and scoring data initially showed Buescher ahead because it fell within the transponder's margin of error, which is a razor-thin 1.5 milliseconds. The next race in the NASCAR Cup Series will be this Sunday, May 12th, at the Goodyear 400 in Darlington, South Carolina. Speaking of historic races, a first-time winner was crowned this past weekend at the Formula One Miami Grand Prix. McLaren's Lando Norris scored his first win in Formula One at a thrilling race on Sunday, beating Red Bull's reigning champion Max Verstappen. Before Miami, Norris held a not-so-great record of the most podiums in F1 without a race win with 15. Max Verstappen started first as per usual, but a mid-race safety car gave Norris an advantage as he moved ahead of the pack. When the race restarted, Norris sped off and no one would catch him. Verstappen ended the race in second, with Ferrari's Charles Leclerc in third. Norris remains in fourth place in the driver's standings, with Verstappen in first, followed by Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc. McLaren is now in third place in the constructor's standings, behind Ferrari and Red Bull. The next race will be next weekend at the Italian Grand Prix. All right, now moving away from all the racing and into the playoffs. The second round of the NBA playoffs tipped off with Game 1 of the Denver Nuggets and Minnesota Timberwolves. Denver has been one of, if not the best team in the NBA all season, and breezed past the Lakers in Round 1. But even though it's early in this series, it seems the Nuggets might be in some trouble. The Timberwolves' Anthony Edwards scored a playoff career high and a franchise postseason record, 43 points as Minnesota beat the defending champion Nuggets 106-99 in Game 1. Edwards was unstoppable in the first half, scoring 25 points, and he was supported by players like Carl Anthony Towns, who had 20 points in the game. The team also shot an insane 71.1% from the floor in the second half. Game two was Monday night, and it went pretty much exactly the same. Again, led by Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns, they overpowered the Nuggets en route to a shocking 106-80 victory. Denver now needs to dig themselves out of this 2-0 hole, and game three will head back to Denver tonight. Tip-off is at 6.30 p.m. The next series that started off round two was the much closer matchup of the Knicks and Pacers. In game one, Knicks star Jalen Brunson continued his dominance in a 121-117 victory for New York. Brunson scored 43 points, becoming the fourth player in NBA history with four straight 40-point games in the postseason. He had 21 in the fourth quarter alone, helping the Knicks come back after being down by nine early in the fourth. Brunson joined Hall of Famer's Jerry West, who had six consecutive 40-point games in the postseason, and Michael Jordan and Bernard King, who both had four. 
Game two was Wednesday night, and while Brunson fell just shy of becoming the second player in history to have five straight 40-point games, the Knicks still pulled off a win in a high-scoring 130-121 victory. The Knicks are up two games to zero, and game three of this series will be today at 4 p.m. The other two series, the Celtics Cavaliers and Thunder Mavericks series, started on Tuesday night. Starting with the Celtics, they came out firing on all cylinders in game one and walked away with a whopping 120-95 victory. Jalen Brown scored 32, Derek White made seven three-pointers and added 25, and Jason Tatum finished with 18 points and 11 rebounds. Game two was last night, and the Cavaliers pulled off a win, evening the series at 1-1. Game three will be tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Then, for OKC in Dallas, Shea Gilgis-Alexander had 29 points, nine rebounds, and nine assists to help the top-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder beat the Dallas Mavericks 117-95 on Tuesday night in game one of their Western Conference semifinal series. Game two of this series was also last night, and the Mavericks tied the series 1-1. to Here's the schedule for the remainder of the NBA weekend. Be sure to tune in to every game, as we only have a few more games left until basketball season officially comes to a close. That same sentiment goes for the NHL. The Boston Bruins and Florida Panthers opened up round two, and Boston absolutely dominated in game one, coming away with a 5-1 to win. Goaltender Jeremy Swayman made 38 saves for Boston on the night. Game two was Wednesday night, and this time, the Panthers got their revenge, beating the Bruins 6-1. Alexander Barkov had two goals and two assists for the Panthers, Brandon Montour had a goal and two assists, and Sam Reinhardt had four assists as the Panthers breezed through game two. Game three will be back in Boston tonight. The New York Rangers and Carolina Hurricanes then kicked off their series, and game one was much more of a nail-biter than the Boston-Florida game. Mika Zibaniyad had two goals and an assist for the Rangers, who defeated the Hurricanes 4-3 in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference second round at Madison Square Garden. Game 2 of this series was Tuesday night, and this game was back and forth, with three lead changes and three ties that led the game into double overtime. Vincent Trocek finally scored in the second overtime on a power play goal at 7:24 into the second overtime period, and the Rangers beat the Hurricanes 4-3 to take a 2-0 series lead in the second round playoff series. Game three was last night, and the Rangers are now one game away from a sweep and advancing with a 3-0 lead. On the western side of the bracket, the Dallas Stars have eliminated the reigning champion Vegas Golden Knights and have moved on to face the 2022 champion, the Colorado Avalanche. Game one of that series was Tuesday night, and believe it or not, that game also went into overtime. The Avalanche were down 3-0 to start the second period, and things looked pretty bleak. But goals by Valerie Nishushkin and Kale McCarr in the second period brought them within one. Then, with just 39 seconds left in the game, Nathan McKinnon tied it up and sent it into overtime. Miles Wood scored at 11.03 into overtime after getting the puck from Andrew Cogliano, and the Avalanche beat the top-seeded Dallas Stars 4-3 in the opener of the second round Western Conference Series. Game two was back in Dallas last night, and the Stars righted the ship, picking up a win and tying the series. And finally, the matchup of Vancouver and Edmonton began on Wednesday. The Edmonton Oilers were up by as many as three goals at one point, but an incredible three-goal third period by the Vancouver Canucks sealed the comeback and their shocking 5-4 upset over Edmonton. Elias Lindholm got the comeback started with 2.59 left in the second period. JT Miller cut it to a 4-3 lead at 9.38 of the third, and Nikita Zadorov tied it with 6.13 remaining. Connor Garland then broke the tie with 5.34 left, ensuring the win. Game two will be tonight at 7 p.m. in Vancouver. That just about does it for this Friday's episode of Sports Corner. Be sure to come back next week for more updates on playoffs, racing, and whatever else happens in the next week in the sports world. There are plenty of games to watch and enjoy, but like I said to start the show, it's finally spring and the weather is incredible, so make sure to enjoy the outdoors as well. I'm Cole Young. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.